Hello everyone, this is Chelsea from Those With Words. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing a journal with me during my recent travel to Hawaii. I had a chance to journal regularly back at the hotel, once at a cafe, and then also on the plane ride home. I am showing some clips from my trip with you now, and I will change to the journal with me clips in just a second, but I hope you enjoy this video. This is a video I first took at the hotel before I went through the journal with me process. I wanted to share with you what my progress looked like at that point in my travel journal. I took the Yudo refill with me. I have a travel journal setup video as well, which I'll link down below. And I spent most of my time so far in this trip as of this clip mostly just putting down ephemera and designating where different photos are going to go. I also have some stamped images there and those are some of the things that I actually did prior to the trip because I could kind of guess how the first day would go. And then after that, our itinerary was really flexible and so I didn't really plan out a lot of the stamping beforehand. I figured I could just do it back home. This red envelope I actually ended up taking out later on in the process. I don't know if it's in this video or not, but it left a stain on my page, so I ended up removing it. And then that little piece right there is actually a napkin, which was kind of fun to include on the page. And there are various ephemera bits that I gathered throughout my trip that I want to put down in this journal. So I am sharing this first part with you at the hotel. This is during the day, so I not only journaled during the nights, basically before bed, but we also had some nice afternoon breaks scheduled during this trip. It was a really relaxing way to travel. And so if I wasn't really doing anything in the afternoon between an afternoon activity and dinner, then I chose to journal. Here I am basically ripping off the back of this label that I got from a coffee shop because I want to put it into my journal, but it is a little bit too thick. And this way it becomes a little bit more manageable for the journaling page to hold. And I'm doing the same to this second label as well. I brought double-sided tape with me at the back of this sticker release paper refill from Traveler's Company, and it served me really well during my trip. I pretty much used all of it by the end, which surprised me. I thought about bringing more, but I didn't. On hindsight, I really should have. I had much more ephemera than I originally thought I would, so that's probably what contributed to that. Regardless, it was a very useful thing to bring, and I will continue to do that in the future. Even for the second piece, I am using it generously, so for each piece of ephemera, I Try not to save the double-sided tape, if that makes sense. I have extra rolls at home. I figured if I use it all up during the trip, I can just go home and paste in the rest of the ephemera. Something else that I also really liked um, and I noticed during my trip is that there are a ton of paper maps here, at least around the more popular tourist spots, I suppose, which I did go to. And this is a map of the Ala Moana Mall. And I wanted to rip out a part to just say, hey, this is the location that I went to. Specifically, Mana Sandwiches. It was really, really good. So I wanted to specifically call that out. So I am just going to go ahead and rip the page out here. I took a second map of the mall just in case I wanted to use some of the other pages as well. And that's just sitting on a separate table in the room. 
The room we stayed in had this circular table, which was really helpful for journaling, but unfortunately the chair that came with the table was not the most comfortable. So by the end of this journaling session, my lower back was hurting a little bit. So next time I need to figure out a slightly more ergonomic way to journal while I am at the hotel. I also grabbed this beautiful business card and I took the sticker off of one of the fruit sandwiches that I ate. And those are some of the elements that I want to make sure to incorporate onto this page. I'm trying to figure out how I want to position this business card and which way I want it to open. And I ultimately decided to put it on the left hand side, um, but on the bottom. And I am putting the map cut out at the top. Let me know how you feel about these more real time videos, by the way. There are some sped up portions of this video later on, but for a lot of the hotel journaling portions, I just wanted to keep it real time and just cut some parts off. Let me know if you enjoy these or if you prefer the sped up portions. I would love to know, so feel free to leave your feedback in the comments down below. Something I like to do with business cards is I like to use a bit of washi tape on both sides to really make sure it adheres well and opens well while it's on the page. So that's the first piece of washi tape, and that's to put that down onto the page itself. And then I usually put another piece at the back of the business card. I try to make sure the piece that I'm putting at the back is a little bit shorter than the piece in the front so that um, it won't really be sticky on the front side because the back piece is longer. I hope I'm making sense there. But this way it has no risk of falling off of the page. So I really like doing that with any business card ephemera. I'm now looking through the rest of the sticker book because at this point I felt that I hadn't really used a lot of the stickers I brought with me and I wanted to make sure that I did. So I went through and found a couple pages to include these stickers on. And there's really no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just basically going through. And this particular spread was about a bakery that I went to. So I put down the Traveler's Company sticker and that's from this year's theme, Traveler's Town. It's the theme sticker set that Traveler's Company does every year that I try my best to use up every single year with varying levels of success, but this year I am determined to use most of them. All of these are materials, PET tape, stickers, and various things that I brought with me that are all in the zipper pocket on the right hand side. And I'm just picking out a couple pieces that I think will go well with some of the pages that I have already looked at. These travel scissors are from Muji and I was able to bring them with me onto the plane without an issue. I did look up what the TSA regulations are on scissors before I packed them into my backpack. And I am from the United States, so this was a domestic flight for me, and so maybe that's also why, but I was able to bring them onto the plane and just in my backpack inside this pen roll without any issues or extra scanning during the airport security process. I am putting that little table PET piece down right there because we did actually get a chance to sit down at this coffee shop for a while, which was quite nice. And then now I'm cutting out this bread piece and I believe I'm going to include that on the bakery spread again. 
So going back and forth here a little bit and just really journaling on a whim. I didn't really have a lot in mind other than I wanted to put down some ephemera and decorate some of the other pages. I'm cutting out a lot of the hesitation in this video. So I go back and forth a lot. I flip the pages back and forth. I get onto the page and then I move around the bits of stickers and other things before I actually decide on where to put them. So sometimes I'm decisive, but other times I'm not. I just want to give you that context because looking back at this clip now, it looks like I'm very decisive. And in this case, like the way I'm putting down these coffee stickers, I just figured, hey, I'll just use a few here. So in this case, it's true, but other times I go back and forth a lot too. Now I am back on this sandwich shop page and I want to figure out how I want to incorporate this sticker. Again, I took that sticker from the wrapping, so it's not maybe the cleanest thing. It, it is clean from a packaging standpoint, but it's not like a brand new clean sticker. So the way I peeled it off left some backing there. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to include this and I decided to actually take a piece of paper and layer it on the back first. And that way some of the backing of the packaging that came off on that sticker doesn't show through as much as it would have if it just went onto the plain paper by itself. And also I tend to enjoy the layered look in journaling, so I tend to do that quite a bit with washi tape and various pieces of paper anyway, so I thought this was a good in-between. And now it looks like that sticker is peeking out a little bit behind the business card, which I really liked how this turned out. I am also cutting out this plate washi tape and I am including that on the other side because we stayed at that food court for a little bit. I've mentioned this before, but I like to anchor a lot of my PET pieces and ephemera with pieces of washi tape, which is what I'm doing here. I brought some Kita washi with me. And I don't think I included that portion actually in the travel journal setup video because I decided afterwards to bring them. So I added a few more things. And actually the paper trash can that I'm using right now, I also forgot to include in the video and that was also a last minute decision. And I actually really like the paper trash can. So I will probably go into a little more detail about that in a future video. But here are the pages from this particular journaling session. And on a given afternoon, this is very realistic for me of what I can do with maybe 30-ish minutes of journaling time. Here I am at a cafe and this is the sped up version or the sped up portion of the video that I mentioned earlier. And I had a chance to meet up with a few friends, which I was really grateful for. So this afternoon, we all sat at the same table and journaled together and chatted, drank some coffee, ate some pastries. It was a really great time. And while we were talking and chatting, I set up a new tripod that I am playing around with to um, try and showcase my journaling process, or at least to record it and see how it turned out. As you can see here, I'm still new at this. The angle is probably not the best, but I wanted to make sure that I wasn't being intrusive and I was only capturing my portion of the table. So this is a little bit zoomed in and 
my hand is a little bit in the way sometimes while I am painting these pastries. I hope that's okay with you. I am painting a croissant and a queen amon, and I'm basically trying to give them a little bit of definition. I had already sketched them beforehand with pencil, and then I went in with the Unipin fine line pen to outline everything. And now I'm just using this art toolkit palette, which I had purchased years ago, and it's still going strong. It was a pre-filled palette, and it's lasting me quite a long time. If you notice on the plate, I tend to paint a lot of snacks and food, so a lot of the light browns and the beige ones are a little bit more used than the other ones, which is kind of fun to look at. After going in and giving some of these definition, I also like to do a little bit of shadowing here on the bottom of each object just to create a little bit more dimension. It's nothing fancy. I just take a really light color and I blend it out as best as I can with my water brush. And this is just a Pentel water brush that I'm using and I'm using the medium size here. So here are the pastries and how they turned out in terms of the watercolor. There is another page right here that I want to also watercolor and I just wanted to focus on this part while I was out and about. And this way it was also easier for me to pause a little bit while I was mixing the colors actually talk to my friends and have conversations because that was the most important thing this afternoon. And just knowing that I was focusing on some really casual watercolor helped me to not feel out of my element when I was catching up with my friends and they were journaling too. So it was a really fun time together. Here I am trying to make sure that the seaweed portion of the musubis have a little bit more definition so i didn't want to make it all gray and all filled in so i tried to use some squiggles with the water brush to show that it has some texture and once again my hand is covering some of the water coloring process but i'm basically coloring in each of the different parts of the musubi so there's spam there's egg and i think this piece right here also had bacon so I'm just trying to color everything and give it a little bit of a variance so it doesn't look like it's all, you know, mushed together, which I used to struggle with a lot more with watercolor, but now I feel maybe a smidge more comfortable with drawing different things. I am definitely not a necessarily like a naturally talented artist or anything. And of course, I understand that in order to be a proper artist, you have to put in a lot of work and effort too. So I don't mean to say that, you know, some people are just naturally good because once you see somebody's drawing, you may not see how much time and effort they'd actually put into developing their own style and really figuring out their color palette and all kinds of things. I have not really done that journey yet. I am basically just drawing for my own memory keeping purposes. So even if something doesn't look quite true to life or, you know, the shading is, well, it's never perfect if I'm being honest with you, but I am generally okay with my own art as long as it's recognizable to me and it brings back a certain memory to me. In this case, really delicious food that I ate that day. Especially with travel journaling as well, I really don't want to put too much pressure on myself for it to be perfect or have a certain look or anything like that. I have personally found that, you know, as much as I enjoy travel journaling, it's a lot of time commitment and I am putting in time to a project and I just want to have fun and just kind of get it done during and after the trip. 
I don't want to pour over it too much or worry about it too much. At least that's the way that I prefer to approach travel journaling. And that mindset actually keeps it really manageable for me. And I try not to worry too much about each and every single drawing or how that might turn out. I'm blending in the strawberries a little bit here. I think I did okay with these strawberries. They actually look like strawberries for once. But yeah, um, while I'm talking as well, like with my friends, I'm just casually coloring these in. And the sandwich part honestly didn't turn out that well. Like the bread part was a little bit too dark and I feel like I added maybe way too little texture. So I didn't add enough. And so it just kind of looks like a blob. <laughs> the bread doesn't look very enticing or very delicious, even though it really was very good. So I feel like the color was a little bit off. It's just something for me to note and hopefully improve on for next time. But as of right now, you know, it is what it is on the page. And I had fun this afternoon. And I captured the food and I got this page done in the end. And that's what's more important to me. The last one that I'm drawing here right now was a katsu sandwich. And this is where I had to use less water. That's something that I usually forget. I usually can't control the water volume too well when I'm using a water brush. And I mean, that makes sense. It's really mostly for convenience, right? So when I went around the edges of the katsu on the inside, it was just way too watery. So I went back in and just really made sure that the edges of it didn't have enough water or didn't have too much water. So it actually stood out like that. And I think that worked out for the better. And I'm trying to bring the bread back to life a little bit here by adding some shading as best as I can and blending it in. Really grateful to my friends who actually let me record. Um, I was worried that they would maybe find it a little bit awkward. So I asked them beforehand and they were so kind to just say, yeah, go ahead and record. I mean, it's just your journal anyway, and we can chat and, you know, I made sure to let them know, hey, the audio is not being recorded. So we can talk about, you know, whatever we want to catch up on. So again, it was a really fun afternoon and I was really glad that I got these watercolors done because I was sort of putting it off. So I was quite determined to finish them this day, and I'm really glad that I did. So that's my journaling session at the cafe. And now I am back to the hotel. This is a different day. And I think this is a shorter showcase, actually. I am basically putting down all the ephemera that I had tucked away in my traveler's notebook. Because, like I mentioned, I gathered quite a bit and I didn't really expect to. But there were a lot of pamphlets and business cards and packaging and things like that that I found I really wanted to include in my travel journal. This strawberry pamphlet is from the same sandwich place. We went back another day because it was really good. And they had a whole pamphlet about strawberries. This place was a really good... Musubi place and I took the business card as well as their chopstick holder. This piece right here was ripped from a cup holder and then when I went to Leonard's Bakery they had a sticker set so I bought that and that's from one of those and some various other business cards and labels. And here is how everything turned out. I used double-sided tape as before, and I put some papers down and other tapes down. This pamphlet was actually really fun to include. I cut the top and bottom off a little bit, 
but I managed to have everything in the traveler's notebook, which is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons really why I really enjoy the traveler's notebook standard size. And I ripped out the spa pamphlet to just make it a little bit more manageable for the journaling page. And that is all the ephemera that I managed to put down this afternoon. As you can see, it's quite messy on the table, but it was a really fun process as well. I also added some stickers to the cover, that one in the front right there, the small one, and then these two. I received them throughout the trip, and it was a really nice way to put some extra decoration on my cover. Here is my quick, plain journaling session. This was a lot harder to capture because I was not using my tripod, so you'll see some shaking and things like that there because of turbulence. Mostly I focused on putting down a lot of the PET tape pieces that I hadn't really been able to use during the trip. So there is that. And then I also did a little bit of sketching later as well, just in pencil. But I'm trying my best to show you here what this looks like. You're getting a little bit of shaking, the turbulence and all. We had a little bit on the way home, so there is that. And here is the status of the travel journal as of the plane ride home. And you'll see some of the pages that I worked on earlier in the video. I think I managed to get a lot of things down. And this way I just have to print the photos when I'm back home, put them down, do a bulk of the writing, and the travel journal will be complete. Here's a quick view of the pencil sketch that I did. We managed to see some fireworks during the trip, which was completely unexpected. We did not plan for that necessarily. So that was a really amazing time. And I did a little bit of writing as well with the gel pens that I brought. For the most part, the gel pens went underutilized during the trip, which, you know, I wanted to write a little bit more, but I just didn't have the energy at the end of each night. I'm still glad I brought them though, because they were here to use during my plane ride home. So that is pretty much it in terms of my video. I'm ending with this beautiful sunset capture that I did on one of the last days there. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.